What is going on guys and welcome back to one last video here in Pakistan. It is a bittersweet moment because I've loved my time in Pakistan and I am excited to share with you guys some more parts of the world as well. That said, I'll for sure be coming back to Pakistan, hopefully this year in 2022. I haven't really figured out my travel plans because to be honest, I don't really plan more than like a week ahead. Actually, the place I'm flying to, I haven't even booked my flight to yet, but I'll probably leave in a couple days. Anyways, guys, I really hope you've enjoyed my time exploring all over Pakistan. Honestly, like the experience was incredible. I wanted to go to Pakistan for years. And finally, I have been lucky enough to spend so much time here, make so many videos and meet thousands of you guys all over Pakistan. And I'm really, really grateful for each and every one of the experiences I've had with all of you guys. So thank you so much. You made this experience one that I will cherish for the rest of my life and definitely an inspiration for me to come back to Pakistan, especially in the summer, because I want to see Hunza Valley when it's a little bit warmer, because I love Tanza. But you know, I'm a warm weather type of guy, so if I can see it in the summer, I'm gonna enjoy that a bit more as well. So that gives me a reason to see you guys. Hopefully this summer we shall see no promises yet, but of course, make sure you guys keep up with the channel because I will share all of my experiences wherever I go in the world, but I do have some upcoming exciting places that I'll be going. And I really hope you guys, uh, a lot of you guys that have joined the channel since Pakistan will stay with me because we're gonna be doing a lot of GOOD things, dealish things, and we're gonna be sharing with you guys some cool places in some surrounding countries that aren't too far away from Pakistan. So anyways, guys, in today's video, we're gonna be doing a Q&A. And actually where all these questions originated from is a couple weeks ago, I did a poll, or not a poll, but like a questionnaire on Instagram where I asked, what are all your guys' questions about my experiences traveling Pakistan? And you can ask me anything on there. Because I ask them through Instagram, make sure you guys follow me there if you're not already, because whenever I finish a country, I always do the question and answer through there. For the main reason that I just like the way that when you submit a question through Instagram, it does the cool little box that you'll see and it's easy to add to the video and it's clean and uh, makes it much easier for you to see it as both a viewer and me to go through the questions really quickly and answer all of them. So yes, we'll go ahead and jump right in guys and let's do it. By the way guys, these questions aren't in any specific order. They're literally just in the order that they were submitted. And so, and make sure you guys stick around until the end because there's probably like 50, 60, 70 questions. I don't even know, I don't even wanna count, but there's a lot and I'm gonna try and answer all of them. So let's jump right in. First one here from Kicks and Travels. Would love to know how to get around in terms of public transportation. Thanks, Mac. So yeah, basically in all the cities, you can take Uber, you can get uh, rickshaws in most of the cities or tuk-tuks, depending on what country you're from, but rickshaws, what they're called in Pakistan. Very inexpensive, especially as a foreigner to get around these um, cities as, as well as you can take buses from one city to another. You can take flights for a good price and you can even take trains if you want, or you can hire a car rental. I actually did a little bit of everything. I did a train from Karachi to Lahore. I did a luxury bus from Lahore to Islamabad. I did a tour with the Posh brothers all around the Hunza Valley, so they drove us around. And then I took a flight back later from Islamabad to Karachi. So I've experienced pretty much all of the types of transportation you can do. And I had a great experience with all of them. They're very reliable, they're very dependable, and I will recommend them to anyone. Uh, Dream with Low, would you recommend women to travel there on their own? To be honest, I am not a woman, but I never felt unsafe there. So I'm a man though, so like I have noticed in countries that I've been to in the past, being a man versus a woman in some countries can be a very different experience. So instead of me answering that and trying to assume what it's like, I would say check out people like Ava uh, Zubek, I believe is her name. She's traveled all around Pakistan, check out her vlogs. She'll share with you what it's like to travel as a female there and she'll give you exactly what you want to hear and that'll be most helpful for you. But from my experience, I never felt unsafe in Pakistan, but once again, I'm a guy and I do want to answer a question based on my experiences because maybe it's going to be different for a female, but I would say female travelers that have been to Pakistan, definitely drop a comment below and let people know what your experiences were because I think it'll be most uh, sincere and most fair to anyone asking this question, what it is actually like when it comes from a female traveler from Pakistan. Uh, Pervez Posh experience, incredible. Uh, Pakistan, it has so much to offer. Like I, I knew I would love the country, but after going from all the different cities, like each city you get a totally different experience and there's like so much to do, so much to see, really good food in all the places I went to. I don't think in the entire country I had a single bad meal that I can remember. So like that says a lot because to be honest, there's a lot of countries I've gone to that I've had a couple bad meals. 
but in Pakistan they were all G double O D. Good uh, uh. Abraham 96, why did you not meet me before leaving Pakistan? Uh, my brother, the kindest man in Pakistan. I'm sorry we didn't get to meet. I only flew into Karachi for maybe like 18 hours before I left. So basically I had to film a video at the hotel and then I had to edit a video and then I had to fly on. So unfortunately, since I was right near the airport, I didn't venture back into Karachi. So definitely when I come back, brother, we will meet again. Sean833, what is one place you didn't get to visit that you would like to go back to visit if you ever go back to Pakistan? Oops, said that kind of wrong. But anyways, I want to go to Skardu. I've heard it's incredible. I want to go to, honestly, like all the cities you guys have been recommending the past like two months that I've been posting videos in Pakistan, there's so many. Like I feel like I only scratched the surface of what there is to see there. So I'll for sure be back, hopefully for another full month uh, tour this year and we'll start checking them off. Sami M. Fale, I love you. I love you too. Life as Dina, is it safe for women to visit? So I've kind of already answered this question, but let me just add maybe one more thing. Like I saw women walking around all over the place. I, I met a bunch of Pakistani women as well uh, that were nice enough, like a Fatima and her family that, you know, showed us cool places and none of ever like experienced any sort of like uncomfortable feeling. Like I'm sure there's places like in every place in the world that you can find areas that whether you're a male or a female you shouldn't go to maybe you know certain neighborhoods but you get that literally anywhere chicago you get that in you know certain areas in you know south american countries in middle eastern you know in every country in the world guys every region you're going to find that and so you know i think that if you're using your common sense and you know not putting yourself at risk like in terms of you know going out at like three in the morning walking down really dark areas you know i wouldn't do that as a male or a female you know doing those types of things if you avoid that you're for the most part going to have a pretty safe experience. But like I said, I don't wanna answer questions as a male for a female, so definitely check the comments below after the video's been posted for at least a few hours, and I'm sure we'll get a lot of really nice, kind people that can drop their experiences below. So thank you guys in advance for that. MHM Batal, how much do you give it from 10 on safety? Yeah, so my experience, it's a hard question to answer, right? Because like, my experience versus someone else's experience might be very different, but like there wasn't a single time traveling all over that I ever felt unsafe. Like, yeah, when I was going up from SWAT to Hunza, we had the police escort the whole way. And that's like a preliminary precaution because the incident that had happened previously in July with the bus full of Chinese workers that was targeted and um, now there's increased security there, right? And so. While I looked around and I like felt like, oh, should I feel unsafe? I never actually felt unsafe while I was in there. Like I fell asleep in the car. If I was actually scared, like while I was on the way up, I probably wouldn't be able to fall asleep, right? So I don't know. I don't want to rate it one through 10. I just never felt unsafe. I'll just leave it at that. From Basit Jindral official, bro, would you like to come back in Pakistan and why and why you not visited Green Valley area Kashmir? For sure, I'll be coming back, brother. I will explore uh, Kashmir, I'll explore quite a few other uh, cities that you guys have been recommending me, as I've already kind of mentioned. And yeah, when I come back, it's going to be awesome. It's gonna be a uh, perfect time to visit the Green Valley because it'll probably be in the summertime if I can make it back this year, or springtime, or maybe uh, fall time, when it's just a slightly bit warmer and then it's gonna be green, so it'll be quite fitting for Green Valley area. From Ashan Raza, graphic designer, how did you decide to visit Pakistan as there is negative press and will you visit Pak again? Yeah, I think the reality is, is I'm trying to go to every country in the world. The press is the press because they talk about top stories, right? So my vision is to share the world in, of course I'm gonna share if something negative happens to me in my videos because I just share my daily life. I'm not trying to sugarcoat anything, but my point is with my videos is if you watch 60 videos and only one or two times maybe a video isn't as positive, maybe I get scammed once here and there. It doesn't matter the country, I'm not saying just Pakistan. But I mean every country I go to, I usually have maybe one or two incidents where sometimes people get mad at me that I share it, but like my content is my daily life. So I don't sugarcoat it, I don't hide things from you guys, and I show you everything, good and bad. And so for me that's just my style. I want to I want to be this new version of media, right? Like the world nomad view is that this is just what daily life is like in these countries. This is what it's like meeting locals on the street. I'm not here to cover top stories in countries. I'm not here, there's already the media for that. That's, that's not what I'm there for, right? And so 
I'm going to all these countries that maybe is known in the media quite poorly, but it doesn't matter. I'm pushing all that aside because every single country has a civilization there that lives, thrives, and they are living their own unique lives. And that's what I want to share with the world. So honestly, the bad press never really affected my views of Pakistan. I honestly don't watch that much news or media unless it's like a, you know, unless I'm going somewhere in a recent thing happen and I need to be informed. I just, I like to create my own perspectives of the world. And so, yeah, I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't concerned before I came to Pakistan. Why don't you visit Peshawar city, the home of hospitality and most loved traditional food? I will be coming, my friend. Uh, King 380, assalam alaikum. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Malikum salam, yar. J315, will you come back and go to Islamabad? Yeah, so I spent probably a total of maybe seven days or so in Islamabad, explored a lot of it, but I feel like I only saw a little bit and I need to re-race the Brit Harry for another go-kart track ride, but this time in Islamabad. So yeah, we'll be back. I'm not sure when, but it'll be on the list for sure. Islamabad was probably my favorite city. I don't know. Each one had its own charm, but I, I like the design of Islamabad because it's very like, you know, cut into sections and you know, it's just got a cool layout to it. I like the Marquez is in the center. Like it's just, it's very easy to navigate, walk around, you know where you can find everything. And so yeah, I'll for sure be back. Strawberry Joker, I didn't see a lot of women in the stories. Could a US woman visit and be welcomed the same? Yeah, I think there there's some areas that are more male dominated, but I would say that there's also a lot of areas and restaurants that it was a 50-50 ratio. Uh, females with their female friends at the restaurants. Uh, it just really kind of depends on where you go. So, you know, once again, I would check the comments in terms of specific individuals' experiences, and I'm sure there's gonna be some nice people that will write, you know, like a solid paragraph, or at least recommend you to a video that you can check out of what it's like as a female traveling around Pakistan. Eat with Rona, what is your favorite food you tried in Pakistan? Paratha. Oh my gosh, paratha bread? Like literally, I could eat that with everything. I just loved how chewy and oily it was. But I think when I had it, like on my way to Swat, I had this omelet that was just, it was cooked by these locals on the side of the road in their restaurant. And like the paratha bread was super oily. And when you take a bite, like it would just like all squish in your mouth. Mmm, I'm hungry guys, it's breakfast time right now. A Weiss, Nazir 332, place you love the most here. Like from beauty wise, I would say Hunza Valley, right? Like the mountainous landscapes, it was incredible. From overall like design, Islamabad, craziness, Karachi, like Karachi was, Karachi was a cool way to start because it, we just got thrown right in it, right? Like the biggest city and, you know, previously the capital city, however many years ago. So it was just like craziness, doing fun stuff all the time. So many things happening, met so many locals. Yeah, each, each place had its own charm though. You know, Lahore's food there, oh, so good. Manir Jablili, hello brother, keep the good work. Just bought a GoPro for vlogging, what is the best setting? Ah, nice. Congratulations on getting your GoPro. So what I film in is 4K and then I film in 50 frames per second. So if you film in 60 frames per second, that's only for certain countries because it's measured on light frequencies. But in Pakistan, 50 frames per second is best for vlogging. 30 frames per second is if you're making more like cinematic videos. Stuart Irvy, are there any quarantine rules? I came in vexed. I didn't have a quarantine and I came in vexed and a negative PCR. Uh, no quarantine. Kevin Hughes, how are the people? Hope you enjoyed your stay in Pakistan. See you next time. People were really kind, like literally the amount of times that people just came up to me on the street and offered to buy me something, offered tea, offered to show me around, just wanted to say hello, wanted to shake my hand, wanted to ask where I'm from. Like guys, overwhelmingly in a good way, the amount of just like welcoming you get there. Like there's one guy in the middle of the night, like he's riding his bike full speed, he slams on his brakes and I was like, oh, what's going on? And he hops up, he's like, hey, I just wanted to say, uh, welcome to Pakistan. And I was like, that was so nice of you. Like he was just driving down the road, slammed on his brakes, hop off the bike, like it's so cool. You know, like we hitchhiked a couple times. We were just like, yo, 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 hop on a motorcycle. And just, but people were just so friendly. They're just ready to help you out. It's madness, like in a good way. Like I just can't believe how nice people are all the time. Kevin Hughes again, was there anyone on the streets questioning you immensely about your visit to Pakistan? I don't think so. There was that one guy on the street that yelled terrorist at me because I'm from the US. So he wasn't really questioning me. He was just kind of like, you know, showing his hatred for the United States. That was about it. Kevin Hughes, were you instilled with any sense of fear during the police escort? Not at all. All the police officers on that were so nice. 
and actually like 50% of the police officers I met, they all subscribed to the YouTube channel too. So I was like, oh, this is great. New police subscribers. Uh, Kevin Hughes, 81727. Did you feel threatened at any point during your trip to Pakistan? No, just once again, like when the guy yelled, um, terrorist at me because I'm from the US, like I felt pretty uncomfortable, but he didn't seem like he was gonna attack me. He just seemed like, man, I mean, maybe, who knows? Like if I argued back with him, maybe he would have, but I'm, I'm not really the type of person that likes to argue with people anyways, because I just don't think it really resolves anything. You know, like if someone has that strong of a point of view, I don't think in a, a moment of heated emotions, you can solve anything, right? So it's just better to walk away. And whenever I get in situations like that, I just try and, hey, okay, you know, if you're calm with other people, not in all cases, there's some people that, you know, just really wanna come after you, but I think if you're nice to people, even when they're really, really angry to you, they're less likely to make like any physical moves on you. Oh, Kevin Hughes, putting in all the pack questions. We got another one here. What can Pakistan do to attract more tourists amid improved overall satisfaction of foreigners? You know, I think right now what I'm seeing is Pakistan's getting a lot of foreign vloggers. And so the really nice part about Pakistan is, is they're really kind when vloggers visit. They love watching the videos, giving feedback, giving recommendations. And I think because Pakistan is such a welcoming country for vloggers from all over the world, that is going to be one of the strongest points in the short term is as more vloggers come. Like since I, since I am finishing up this Pakistan series, I'm seeing so many new vloggers. Um, you know, both small and big level vloggers that are coming to Pakistan because, you know, they're, they're seeing other vlogs, they're seeing, wow, there's a lot of cool stuff to explore, really nice people and, and Pakistani people really support vloggers. And so I think, you know, the fact that you guys are so supportive of vloggers coming to your country, of tourists, of anyone coming to your country, and that's being seen in vlogs that is going to be shown to so many more countries in the world. And then after some time, that's going to bring in even more tourists. But yeah, I think promoting more like tourism packages and a lot of things like that are gonna be super helpful. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that my series will inspire a lot more people to come to Pakistan and, and see how great of a country it is. Kevin Hughes, do you plan to go to Pakistan again? Answer that one, yes I do. Hamzarafakat4, sorry if I'm saying um, names wrong, I apologize. Pakistan, safe country or not? American bro, what's your mind? Yeah, like I kind of said already, Pakistan for me was a very safe experience. I met so many kind people and I had a really nice experience. So yeah, I mean, here and there, like when you're at certain areas, maybe once in a while you'll find someone who might try and make an extra few dollars off you and scam you, but like just negotiate, just bargain and hold your ground in a nice way. Say what you mean, but don't say it mean. So, you know, when I was at Clifton Beach in Karachi, you know, they, it's funny, you can watch the video and you can see at the beginning when they tell me the price and at the end they totally change it. But they were trying to get a lot more from me and I was like, no, I'll give you a little bit more, but I'm not going to give you a lot more. But the reality is you get scammers in a lot of countries. So, you know, just realize that like that, that happens in a lot of places you'll visit. Frito guy, how many hoops did you have to jump through as an American going to Pakistan? I don't think really any. I applied for a visa. They did give me a bit of a hard time. They wanted me, I was in Lebanon at the time when I applied for it and there's a Pakistan embassy here. And they wanted me to fly back to the United States DC embassy on the other side of the world to go to the embassy. And I even wrote them like a long letter that, Hey, I'm a vlogger. I'm coming to share food culture and my experiences in Pakistan to hopefully increase tourism. And I like was on the phone with them and I, I wasn't happy though, because the embassy in DC, like they didn't want to answer my calls after I was like trying to work out a solution with them. Cause I think they got mad that I called the Pakistan embassy in Lebanon to see if I could go for my interview that, that the US wanted. And I didn't mean to make anyone upset. I was just trying to figure out a solution and not spend $2,000 and three days of my time to fly back to the US for, for an interview, right? And so then actually I just was like, okay, I guess it's not meant to be because the guy, the guy, in, uh, the, guy in the Pakistan embassy in DC, he made a comment that I just didn't think was very nice to me, which was, he's like, all right, well, if you don't want to come back to DC, then you just keep traveling. And I was like, uh, okay, well, can I visit Pakistan? He's like, no, 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 just skip Pakistan for now and, and travel other places. And I was just like, well, I really want to visit your country. He's like, okay, well, that's too bad. You have to come back to the US. And he just said it in a tone where I was like, oh, which is, which is surprising because Pakistani people are so welcoming. 
and so you know it's it's the embassy though you can't you can't necessarily blame them they're obviously looking out for threats and you know they want to make sure things are, are safe and so maybe they did a bit more research on me because after i decided okay i'm not going to pakistan now because i can't get in then i flew to jordan with harry that's where we went before pakistan uh and then all of a sudden I land in Jordan and I check my email and it says your visa's been approved. So maybe they looked me up and we're like, okay, he's not a threat. And we checked his YouTube channel and they said I could come in. So I think it depends on the country. Oh, no, I don't think. I know it depends on the country you know, you're from. Because Harry, he didn't have an interview. He didn't have to submit like a letter of intent. None of that stuff. He just needed to show up like a hotel booking and they approved his visa in about five days. So mine took about two weeks. But... No, it was, it was a very chill process overall. I think, you know, I'm sure the guy, the way he said things to me when, you know, he was like, oh, just visit Pakistan later. He probably didn't mean it in uh, the way that he said it to me, but I just, I honestly was so shocked when I got approved for the visa. Like I thought it was not possible because they were very, very, very assertive. Like you have to come. There's no way around it. And I was like, hmm, really wanted to go this year. so. Really glad it worked out, guys, because I had such a nice time. Scrunchies, crotchy business. Why are you guys not replying to my all texting? If I'm gonna be completely honest with you, I have over 50,000 unread messages on Instagram, and I just simply can't reply to everyone. I think probably most of you guys would agree you'd rather have me creating content than replying to every single person. Now that said, I try and reply to 50 to 100 people per day on Instagram, and I reply to as many comments as I can, but I hope you guys understand, it's not that I'm ever ignoring you guys, it's just that I literally get probably 1,000 comments a day just on YouTube alone, probably 3,000 comments a day on Facebook, and um, maybe 1,000 messages a day on Instagram, so you gotta think about it. Like if I replied to each message, that may, might take me 30 to 45 seconds, times that by a thousand messages that'd be my entire day right so you know i just hope you guys understand that uh i really appreciate all your messages and your comments and so i'll do my best to get back to as many of you as i can and just know that even if i don't get back to your message i'm really really grateful for you all and i, I thank you so much dm maru up hi mac how would you think women travelers would get on well i've already kind of answered this one so i'm gonna skip it zishan kiri how are pakistani people started to, actually I talked about this one quite a bit, very welcoming, very hospitable. They wanna make sure you have an amazing time in their country. They treat guests literally like royalty, how nice they are. Like There were so many times I'd be like, please no, just let me pay, let me pay. And they would just have already gone and paid for it. And they would insist, insist, insist. So they just, they really just wanna make sure that when you come, you have a great experience. And you know, like so, so welcoming. I have so many, really kind people that I was able to shake their hand in person and meet them and just hear a bit about their stories and just a lot of great people there. So I'm very grateful for the experience. Osama Rajput, when are you coming back to Pakistan? Inshallah, this summer. Amy K78, do they want COVID shots for entry? I believe a vaccination is required. Always though guys, just check the current COVID regulations. I don't like to necessarily speak in my vlogs about COVID regulations because Maybe you'll see this video a month after it's posted and it might be completely different then. And I don't want you coming back to me and saying, Mac, these COVID, issues, these COVID regulations were different. They change, you know how the world is now, like they change so frequently, just check their website and it'll be all listed out there for you. Amy K 78, do you think it's safe for an American woman to travel alone to Pakistan? Already answered that one. OG Ja Chan, are people more rude in Pakistan or Jordan? I don't think in either countries I ever really experienced rude people. Like there was one incident in each country where there wasn't a good interaction, but otherwise no, people are nice in both. Chillin' Gringo, how did you get the LOI? So from the Posh Brothers, uh, you can check all of the Hunza Valley videos. There's a there's a uh, link to, and in this video too, there's a link to Akram Posh's Instagram. You can message him, he does tours, customized, you can do short, long tours with him and he can write a letter of intent for you. They notarize it and they send it back to you and that's how you get it. There's other ways to get LOIs. You just need a letter from someone in Pakistan. Once again, I would check the visa requirements, but generally speaking, you just need someone in Pakistan to invite you and then, then you're able to get past that. Museum man, Bahati, you must do some Punjabi village vlog. Hope to see you again and hope to see you in my village. I would love to, that would be such an amazing experience. BTW, it's Aman. To be honest, tell us which one of these countries you like the most. Pakistan, India. So 
both countries I had a great experience, but I visited India in 2014 and I wasn't really a vlogger then. I think I made one short video uh, while I was there. I was like, geez, what, what was that, like eight years ago now? So I'm gonna go back to India hopefully this year and I will be able to share both countries. But both are amazing guys. You'll never get me to say one's better than the other. I support both countries. Sidra1680, which city of the Pakistan do you like more and why? Will you want to come again in Pakistan to visit? Yeah, so I already answered this one. I, I'd say, you know, Islamabad, I just really like the layout of the city. It's very, very easy. You know, it's fun to just go from Marcas to Marcas each night and try out like the different restaurants. Sidra1680, which country tour do you like most? Ooh. I will say the more countries I go to, the harder it becomes to say which I like most because my experiences are so vastly different from country to country. And to be quite honest with you, every time I go to a new place, I feel like I become a more, I feel like I become a better version of myself, right? I understand one more part of the world a little bit more than I used to. And so when I take those experiences from one country and then I go to my next country, my next country, my next country, I'm able to be a better traveler. I'm able to immerse myself in the cultures more and more. And so I'd say, you know, each tour I go on, I, I have more and more of a culturally enriching experience, uh, but I've, I've liked so many, I, I honestly can't even say which is the best. Nary memories, did you enjoy being in the city or the nature trips more? I like a mix. I like to do a bit of both. It's good to have both sides of it so you can see what busy city life is like and also r what rural life is like because you're gonna get two different lifestyles, right? You're gonna get that in any country you go to of what it's like to be a city person and what it's like to be a villager. And so I try and do that in most places I go, go to the rural areas, go to the busy areas, and then maybe something in between to get a full kind of like well-rounded 360 degree view. Khalil Kuara, which is the best way to exchange USD? Is there like black market to exchange USD for Pakistani rupees? I've never heard of a black market to exchange rupees. I just, to be honest, I took all my money out of the ATM. Maybe I paid slightly more than if I would have brought a bunch of US dollars to Pakistan and exchanged it at maybe like a local exchange shop. But for me, in most countries generally, I prefer to have less cash on hand and just go to the ATMs because, you know, if something bad happens and I get robbed, I would much rather have a smaller amount of cash taken from me than a larger amount. All right, next question, Rosie or whatever. How would you compare the Pakistani food, hospitality, and culture to what Lebanon? I mean, it's that's a hard question to answer, right? Like two different countries, two different cultures. I would say that, yeah, I mean, Lebanese food is gonna be much different in terms of like, you know, tabule, fatouche, uh, shawarmas here, you get a lot more of like that type of food, sejouk, I can name so many. But, and then in Pakistan, you, you definitely get more of your unique, the problem is I never remember the Pakistani food names, so forgive me guys, but of course if you watched all my videos, you know that I tried quite a few different types. But they're, yeah, they're different cuisines, but they're both really delicious guys. Like if you have uh, like a, a food palette that you just enjoy tasting delicious foods, you're gonna find great foods in both. The hospitality you're gonna find in both places. I would say generally speaking in Pakistan, you'll have more just random strangers on the street walk up to you. That doesn't mean that in Lebanon that won't happen. Like if you walk up to someone in Lebanon, they'll always help you. They'll be super kind and friendly. Just in Pakistan, more people will literally just like walk right up to you. But like that being said, guys, they're both amazing countries and both of the experiences I've had in both of those countries are making me come back again and again. F. Koch one did you experience anti-American hostility other than the guy in the crotch hit at the market? Uh, nope, I don't think so. There's a couple times people were surprised when I said I was American, but it wasn't like in a negative way. They were just like, oh, you're American. So maybe it was good, maybe it was bad. I think it was good, but I think they were just like, oh, surprised. Because sometimes people don't always, I mean, maybe you guys obviously are used to knowing that I'm American, but I get, people think I'm from all over the world. Sometimes people think that I'm from China. Sometimes people think that I'm German. I've had people think that I'm Lebanese even. <laughs> so it, it's funny, like uh, it just depends on the country. People just will like think I'm from a bunch of different places. Uh, USDSH, your favorite place and why, by the way, you guys are awesome. Already answered that one. Thank you so much, I really appreciate it. And so are you guys live a life of purpose. What did you love more? I think you're asking probably like what experiences that I love more. Oh, I, I don't know that I loved one more than the other. Like I said, just me as a traveler, I like to experience many types of things because for me, I like to get an entire country representation as best as possible. Obviously, I haven't been to all the cities, but I'd say, you know, I got a pretty good understanding of what life in Pakistan is like when I did the tour all the way from basically Karachi, the furthest point south, 
all the way up to the Hansa Valley. But there's a lot more for me to explore and experience and those those four general areas that I went to, four or five roughly, they were enough to make me want to come back. Hamidi Zara, I'm going to Pakistan in one month from the USA. Have an amazing time. I wish you the best. Bilal Gandal 7, I just want to say something. Huge respect and love from Pakistan. You are a gem. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. You guys are so supportive of the content, so nice. And I go through these comments every single day that you guys leave and it's just, it's really heartwarming. And let's continue to spread kindness around this world, guys. That's how we, we bring cultures together. That's how we make changes in this world. Nimdar, tell what you feel and experience in detail. I feel like I've kind of answered this one, just generally I feel very welcomed into Pakistan. If I flew there right now, I guarantee you as soon as I walk out of the airport, someone would be like offering to show me a cool place in Karachi or wherever I flew in or take me for a cup of tea. Like it's just the second you arrive there, actually even on the plane, if you saw my first video when we flew from Jordan to Karachi, we were already meeting people just walking up to the plane that you know were, were super kind and fun. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a cool experience. DX online store, bro, I missed you. I was trying to met you, but you can't reply me. It's okay, but next time we will meet, inshallah. Inshallah, my friend, we will. Tawheed, quadruple zero. Any one negative bad thing related that should be changed or... I don't think so. Like, I didn't really have negative experiences in Pakistan. Generally, everything was a, a nice time. I don't really have anything that I would change about my experiences there. I just honestly want to see more. <laughs> That's about it. I'm sorry, like, I'm not really as good at, uh, I mean, if you guys know me, right? Like I always look for positives and things. So it's very hard for me to go searching for negatives. I know that's probably not everyone's favorite answer, but like I try and see the world in, in as beautiful way as possible. And I believe it brings happiness when you see the world for its best rather than its worst. I know that wasn't necessarily what you were asking. You were asking more like, is there anything we can make better for tourists? I think it's moving in a really good direction. Like I said, like since I've left, like I said, since since I've filmed this Pakistan series, I've seen so many more vloggers coming, which are just gonna bring that many more viewers from all around the world to come to Pakistan. Fahim Gujar44, wanna visit again? Yes. Explore Pakistan's beauty. Did you ate Karachi's biryani? Oh yeah, look at this belly. That's a biryani belly. Im Umar73, will you be back in summers? Inshallah, I'll be back. Random stuff, which city did you think was overall the best? Answer that one, random stuff. Will you visit Pakistan again? Answer that one. Rahaf Al Jamal 96. In your opinion, what difference did you, did you notice between the East and the West of the world in general? Mm, that's an extremely challenging question. I'm not gonna lie, that's, that's a tough one. Yeah, I think generally speaking, the hospitality that I find in the East is, is much more welcoming. And it's not that, like in the West, it's not that people, it's not like you're not gonna find kind people. There, there's very nice people there too. But I think just generally like walking down the street, you're going to have more interaction with locals, right? You're gonna speak to more people. You're gonna have more like intimate experiences with strangers on the streets. So that's what I would find is like in my daily life, what I find is the biggest difference. Ayanna Raymond, I probably said that wrong. Define your experience in Karachi, Lahore, and Islamabad in one line each. Sounds more like an exam question. One line, all right. Karachi, crazy, wild, and exhilarating. Lahore, tasty, sporadic, because so many things happened, and very fun. Islamabad, defined, structured, and very well presented. Avil and Mary, which is your favorite place in Pakistan, which you and Harry visited, already answered that. Navish is what are the positives and negatives takeaways from the Pakistan trip? Yeah, I would say positives. I have a stronger love now for Pakistan. I've always I've had Pakistan friends from all around the world, so I always knew how nice and kind and like really strong uh, friendships. Like the relationships that I find in Pakistan, they they happen quick and they become very strong bonds. Like if you saw in the videos, like Fatima and her family, Akib, like all of us became really close friends in a short period of time. And that's a very special experience, right? Like there's some countries that I've been to, it takes a while to build that really strong friendship. But like the friendships that I had in Pakistan, like they, they sprouted, they blossomed very quickly. And so that is something, you know, that I, I've always really enjoyed with, with my Pakistani friends all around the world. I would say like when I, when I experience this, it really makes me like, wow, that's, that's a, it's such a nice way, like how people approach each other, how, they offer kindness and goodwill. Like I want to take that with me and keep trying to be, you know, pass on the same type of hospitality to other people when I, when I can, you know. Uh, negatives, I'm so bad at this question, guys. <laughs> but I know you want to know these questions too. 
I'm just not good at looking for negative stuff. Like I didn't, I didn't have negative experiences there. I wish I would have learned more Urdu, <laughs> and I wish I would have figured out because it's so funny. Like fifty percent of you guys love that I say yar, and then the other fifty percent are like. You're so annoying. Stop saying it, Mac. And I'm like, who do I believe? It's like 50-50. But I feel like some of you guys it grew on because at the beginning of the series, I almost only heard, stop saying yar. And then by the end of the series, most people say they love that I say shukriya yar. So, but what happened there, guys, it's because I filmed this entire series. And then basically, I was already pretty much at the end of the series when I started posting it on YouTube. Because the situation with me visiting Pakistan was I filmed 60 videos in 24 days there. So just nonstop. Some videos, some days I filmed four videos in a day. So it was, it was like really high paced and fast because I wanted to explore a lot, share a lot of Pakistan. And I also wanted to, I went back home for the holidays for just a little bit. So that way I could have enough daily videos because I'm a daily vlogger to get me through while I go home real quick to go see some friends or family. So some of you, that might be a surprise. You thought I was in Pakistan for all of this. I was in Pakistan for about 50% of the series while it was released, I was just two weeks ahead. But a lot of you figured that out when you went to Harry's channel, because his channel is about two weeks ahead of mine in terms of video posting. Maryam Ren 11, what's the best thing you ate? Paratha bread, I already said that. Kuki, tell us about the beauty of Pakistan, please. Atabad Lake. The New Zealand of Pakistan is what I'm naming it. Someone else I'm sure has probably called it that, but it reminded me of New Zealand because that ultra turquoise water just madness and how beautiful it was you guys gotta go there suni ali 1451 only thank you for coming and come again brother thank you for the welcoming brother i'll for sure be back abdul hadi how to see pakistan's future in relation to tourism i think it's going to continue increasing a lot i think that you know the more of these vlogs like i said 10 times already in this video the more of these we get out the more we share how great pakistan is the more you guys are able to interact with vloggers who can bring this really good press to the country i think it's just so so helpful so just pakistan being pakistan as more people visit it's going to attract a lot of tourism because the kindness is i mean look at drew binsky one of the most well-known travel content creators in the world he said i can't remember exactly his quote but he was like in pakistan it's impossible to pay for stuff because they're so welcoming they will try and pay for everything it's just so nice like it's I personally don't want people paying for me because I just would rather pay and give back my own money to the locals. But you know, just the gesture is very, very nice that people do that. Uh, Jay Wani Omer, I love you. I love you too. Ahmed Bilal, we love you. Come back again. Apologies if you had a bad minor experience. No problem, honestly, guys. I'm not the type of person, like literally, even if something really bad happens to me in a country, I would never blame the country as a whole. Because guys, we can't blame ever one country for one individual's actions you know like that's my most important point that i try and share with people in videos i know many people that have totally 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 made a country look bad because of something bad that happened to them by a random person and then they define the entire nation by that that's so wrong guys there are good and bad people in every country in the world trust me i'm not saying this because i think that i'm saying that because i witness it and as I travel to every country in the world, this is what I'm gonna continue telling people. Cash Mahmoud, not a question. I loved all your vlogs, keep smiling. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. You guys are the ones that make me smile though. Cash Mahmoud, will you come back to Pakistan to visit other cities? You betcha. Rabi Zufikar, loving all your videos, came across your channel from Luke's and I'm glad I did. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, Luke's a good friend of mine and yeah, he gave me a lot of great recommendations for Pakistan. So thank you to Luke, you Luke, I appreciate that brother. Uh, why? Z87, how old are you? Do you miss your place, family, and friends? I am 29 years old as of January 13th. It's my birthday a couple weeks ago. Yeah, but I go back and see my family and friends twice per year, usually around uh, the July time and then around the December time frame. And I'll usually spend two to like six weeks back home. So I get to see them, but of course I always miss them. But the world is where I belong, you know? Traveling from country to country and meeting people and experiencing it this is this is where my heart is so i miss them but i also love what i do afi angel if you get a chance to live in pakistan will you stay that's a hard question people ask me that all the time i don't know where i would live. people are always like when you stop traveling one day where are you gonna live and i'm like i don't know i really like have no idea guys i'm 
I'm so far from that point. Like I'll stay in places for like a month at a time. And maybe sometimes I'll like stay, stay even in one city if I want to catch up on work. But like, I don't really have like a set idea on where I want to be, you know? Like I, in the last year or two, I've started to live more in the present, you know? Like a lot of my life, I always thought about what's tomorrow going to be like. How is, you know, how's my life going to be in a year, um, two years, five years? And then one day I realized I was like, whoa, a third of my life, or you never know when your life's going to end. But if I live to like your average life expectancy, a third of my life has already gone by and I was always so focused on the future. And now it's just, I try and take in each day's experiences and enjoy them. And I try and be grateful each day. And it's brought a lot of inner happiness for me to not always be concerned about what's happening in my future. Afia Angel, will you visit Pakistan again? Yes. Afia Angel, how many times did you get scammed? This is such an interesting question because some people, it totally depends on your perspective. I'd say it's almost 50-50 and you get more of the stronger opinions on my Facebook videos, but it depends on what you define as a scam. Like, so maybe a rickshaw driver will charge me 200 instead of 100 rupees. Some people call that a full on scam. Before I came to Pakistan, I didn't really know that as a scam. I would just say like, they would maybe charge me a bit extra. Uh, like I've been scammed in places where like they try to charge me hundreds of dollars because they like, I'm not gonna say the country uh, in this video, for very specific reasons, but basically they lied to me, in, like in this country I was in, they lied to me and said the train was canceled. And so we had to ride with them. They were gonna give us a car transport three hours away. It was gonna be like $200 or something like that. I can't remember, it was so many years ago. But they made up this entire like scam process. And so for me, that feels more like a mega scam, right? But like small little scams. Yeah, I think that the reality is there was a handful of times, mainly like when I was near like Clifton Beach, Karachi, where it was common where people would just kind of like take advantage. They would tell me one price and after I would do it, they would have like double, triple, even quadrupled the price. It wasn't that many times, guys. Keep in mind, like the amount of times that people tried to pay for my meals and do all this totally outweighed in a good way. How many more times the good things happen than the bad? Afi Angel, most favorite food in Pakistan. By the way, I'm from Pakistan, Karachi. I live in Canada. Oh, sweet. I've only been to Toronto and Canada. I want to explore more of Canada too. Laura Toma, 38. I enjoy all your videos, brother. God bless you. Greetings from Sydney, Australia. Thank you so much. God bless you too. And I love Sydney. I was there in 2020, right before the pandemic hit. Super cool city, would love to come back. Parikshat, which was the best city of Pakistan? Already answered that. Fomatic, was getting good Wi-Fi to upload every day a problem? To be honest, it was, I was able to work around it because basically how my, process works is my videos are delayed like i just explained a bit ago so my editors help me edit these videos so i'll upload the 30 40 gigabytes of footage from the video my editor will receive it they'll send it back to me and then i'll edit the last 10 to 20 percent of the video so i would always make sure i have at least like five or six videos already uploaded whenever i would have strong enough wi-fi to upload and then that way, if I ever had a poor Wi-Fi situation, like up in Hunza, the Wi-Fi was very, very poor all the time. There was nowhere I found that was good internet speed for uploading. You could still use your phone and stuff, but like for uploading as a YouTuber, very tough up in Hunza. So Harry had a big problem with that. That's why he was delayed on some of his uploads. For me, I scheduled while I was still in Islamabad, had faster internet, uploaded everything then. So it's just, you gotta plan, plan around it, right? Go to the good Wi-Fi places and um, do as much as you can while you have the Wi-Fi. Fomatic Harry said in a vlog that foreign phones can't use Pax Sims, but friend said that's not true. So it's very confusing. Mm, the Pakistan SIM card, I don't remember the name of the phone company now. Was it Uphone? Whatever one I got in Karachi, it worked for calls, but it didn't work for data. Someone was telling me like, you need to get some special permission. But then when I went up to Hunza, I, we got the permission. They gave us 24 hours. They looked, they, we gave them our passports and everything. 24 hours later, the SIM cards were activated. So I think in Karachi, they just didn't activate our SIM cards with our passport numbers correctly. And that's why we had the issue. So I would just make sure you go to a corporate store, like an actual branch and test it before you leave. Fomatic, where did you stay in Lahore? Was it any good? We stayed at the Pearl Continental for a few days, really nice. That one's more businessy, so it's a nice hotel, but it, it feels more like a business conference center. And then where else did we stay in Lahore? Afari Express. 
it was a good price, good location, easy to walk to all the local food places like Liberty Market, just a few blocks away. And yeah, nice area over there and modestly priced. Shurik has said, why are you headed for Dubia? Hmm? I went to Dubai, but I'm not headed there now. Faizi Kanzada 17 bro, reply me, inbox, big fan. Sorry, I missed your message. Shirar Yar, what was the process of getting a Pakistani visa was like for you? Already explained that one. FIFA Cristiano 7, in which city you enjoyed the most? Already answered that one. Arslan TK, among all countries you have visited so far, which country is similar to Pakistan? I don't know yet. I, I can't think of one specifically. I would say, I know Pakistan's not the Middle East, it's South Asia, but I would say a lot of the Middle Eastern countries I was in, in terms of hospitality and kindness of people, that's the biggest similarity I can find. But Pakistan's very unique. Azim6470, best place to visit in Pakistan. Already did that one. Arsalan TQ, Pro Continental or Serena Hotel. Which one is better in Pakistan? So my experience in Karachi PC, Pro Continental, that one I think I enjoyed the most because they upgraded us to a nice room. The staff, we met so much of the staff and they were just like awesome. I met a lot of the staff, it was very cool. It was just a bit more businessy. So it was very fancy and it was very crowded because there was an event, so it was very packed. It was still a nice hotel, great amenities, but it just it felt very crowded. Serena, Serena was amazing. Very high class, very nice. And I think Serena maybe had more amenities. I think it is classified as the best hotel in Pakistan. So like luxury wise, Serena probably just simply wins and it was more expensive, so. But they were both awesome stays. Azim 6470, was this the first time you went to Pakistan? Yep, but it won't be my last, I'll be back. Arslan TQ, most scenic place in Pakistan, definitely the Hunza Valley, but I heard Skardu is also incredible, so I would love to go. But specifically in Hunza Valley, the Atabad Lake was my favorite. Just the turquoise blue lake, it was just mesmerizing. Best thing you like about Pakistan, definitely the hospitality. Arslan TQ, who told you to visit Pakistan, was it Luke Demant? No, I'm planning to visit every country in the world. So Luke had been, so you know, he's like, you gotta go, it's amazing. But I was planning on going even before I met Luke, I just hadn't made it yet. So, I don't know. I just, uh, I wanna go to every country and Pakistan seemed like a great next option. Arsalan TQ, one moment in Pakistan where you got scared, I already answered that. Azim 6470, is the food in Pakistan cheap? It's been a while since I last went to Pakistan. Yeah, it's very inexpensive in Pakistan in terms of uh, coming with a Western budget. You know, I could eat for like a dollar, dollar fifty, like a really nice chicken biryani in uh, just like more of a local place. Obviously, if you went to touristy places, you might pay five, six bucks for a meal for like a very touristy place. But otherwise, good prices. Arslan TQ, how do you rate internet speed in Pakistan? It's really poor. Yeah, I would say for your average person, the internet's fine, right? For a vlogger, the internet speed in most places was very slow for uploading. But most people aren't uploading massive amounts of gigabytes. It can still be done. Like honestly, if you're a vlogger and you're going, I would just tell you, upload your video overnight. And then by the morning, it's usually gonna be uploaded in most hotels. Arslan DQ, what can authorities do to bring more foreign tourists in Pakistan? I think a lot of countries really become well known just from more travel influencers, vloggers, content creators. I think Pakistan has now allowed TikTok. Correct me if I'm wrong. I wanna say when I was there, TikTok still worked, right? So. TikTok has been such an incredible way for brands, countries, creators, everything to really get the word out because it's so viral there. So if more content or tourism uh, videos, things like that are put on TikTok, it's gonna have a mass effect to spread all around the world. And I think that'll give some really good light for more people coming to Pakistan. But like I said, bringing in a lot of vloggers, content creators, that's gonna give a really strong influence to bring people to Pakistan. Arslan TQ, how do you rate hotels, Airbnbs in Pakistan, good average bed? Hotels, uh, most of them really great. I liked them all. You, you know, ultimately, it all depends on what you paid for. Airbnbs, it's hard to give me a fair rating because I only stayed in two Airbnbs and both I left early. The problem was, is both of those Airbnbs I booked maybe one day before. So if you book your Airbnb anywhere in the world two, three weeks before, you're gonna have more options to book. So maybe I was just left with options that weren't great. So the only Airbnbs I stayed at, I didn't have the best experience. And they were very expensive compared to like staying in a nice hotel. So I was a little surprised by that. But once again, that's, I don't wanna judge the entire country's Airbnb 
off my two experiences because I booked the night before or two nights before, right? So like, I think you should still try out Airbnb. Did you have Chopli kebab? I don't think so. But if you guys have seen my whole Pakistan series and I did have it, drop a comment below because I don't remember having Chopli kebab. Arslan TQ, most underrated place in Pakistan. I would say probably Hunza Valley. Like until I started researching Pakistan before I was coming, I had never really heard of it, but it is incredible. I would tell you every single day in Hunza Valley, I would just walk out and look at like some of the most beautiful mountain peaks I'd ever seen in my life. Just so, so incredible. Arslan TQ, when you got harassed by a man in Karachi shopping mall, did it affect your Pakistan plans? No, not at all. Actually, after that incident happened, shortly after we met Pakistan's kindest man. So like it was just a day of good and bad things happening. So it was just part of the adventure, guys. In the moment, I was a little, you know, obviously maybe emotionally caught off guard, but it didn't even change much for the day. That day ended up being such an awesome day after we met Abdul Rahim. He showed us such awesome places, it was great. Azim 6470, did you go to Peshawar in Pakistan? Not this time, but next time. Azim 6470, did you have Pashtun food? Probably. Comment below, guys, if you saw if I had Pashtun food. I feel like I must have at some point. Arslan TQ, how do you rate public transport in Pakistan as compared to the rest of the world? I thought the public transport was good, very dependable. I don't think I ever used a city bus per se, but I used like, you know, taxis and Ubers. Very, very efficient, very easy to use. Uh, bus systems from city to city, train systems. Yeah, great stuff. Candy Chandy Zero, why did they burn the Sri Lankan alive? I think that you should do your own research on that. I don't, I don't feel comfortable talking about it. I'm not informed enough to, to answer that. Ayesha Patel 3, Habibi Mac, I really enjoy watching your videos. You always make me smile and laugh while on. Thank you so much, that, that's so sweet. And that's so kind to say. Banana MZ, was it safe there? I felt safe the whole time, like I mentioned. Travel G, Chazing Sun, where would you recommend to stay in P away from the bustle and bustle? Definitely Hunza Valley. If you're looking for something more in the mountains, away from just city life, then yeah, go up to Hunza Valley, stay up there in the villages. You can talk to my buddy Akram Posh, and he runs tours up there. He can show you all around, take you to the villages, really give you a low key, local, uh, nice experience. This video is not sponsored either. I paid for that excursion myself. I just thought the Posh brothers were very nice, so I want to support their business. Sena Bas Mohammed, which country do you go next? Well, you'll see in tomorrow's video. Bashar Saab, would you do it again? Definitely. Nick Land, 19, favorite or most memorable person you met? Abdul Rahim, kindest man in Pakistan. He was one of them, but also Fatima and her siblings. They were so, so nice and generous. We spent a lot of time with them. So all those guys, they were uh, guys and gals. They were really nice and really made our Pakistan experience and became really close friends with all of them. But everyone else I met, I had some awesome experiences with too, but like those people I spent the most time with, chatted the most, and yeah, it was, it was awesome. HS Style Stand, favorite food from this trip? Answer that, HS Style Stand, Karachi or Lahore? Karachi if you wanna get more into like the city life, the busyness, the craziness. Lahore if you just wanna be like on a full food tour. Edith0923, do you recommend which tourist guide is good for traveling to Hunza and Lahore? I didn't use a tour guide in Lahore, but my buddy Akram Posh, like I mentioned already, he's great for Hunza. He's from the greater Hunza Valley, so he knows that area like the back of his hand. So he's a good one to reach out to. And then also, I'm sure he can show you anywhere else around like Lahore, other parts of Pakistan. He does tours all over the country, so I would reach out to him. He's the only tour guide I worked with in Pakistan, so it's my only experience. Stephanie Musa, what was the wildest experience in Pakistan? Honestly, probably when like the craziest and probably the most dangerous was when like Harry and I were hitchhiking to the theme park and we got on on the inner, like basically on a fast highway going probably like 60 kilometers an, uh, an hour, four people on a motorbike. That was just dumb on our part because that's dangerous. I was like, I literally was on the seat like this much. I could have fallen off that motorbike with one false move. We just like, we didn't have any way to call an Uber. Like we were stranded because we got dropped off at the wrong spot. So like the problem was is we didn't really have a choice and they were the only people we could get to pick us up. So that was like the craziest just because it was like a bit dangerous, but it still wasn't like that crazy. It was just like, boom, after we were like, let's not do that again. One of us could have fallen off. What was the most special thing about this trip from uh, Tasneem Rashdan? Probably I would say just the interaction with the locals, I had some just really, really connecting experiences with them. And those for me are my favorite parts of being a traveler. 
Aisha Patel three. Do you call yourself a traveler or a tourist? I I define travel in two ways. You're a vacationer or you're a traveler. Like a traveler isn't defined by like fi- always finding the most luxurious or like you know sitting on the beach. A traveler is just someone who is going to a place and just getting to know it, exploring the culture. Could be luxury, could be cheap, but you're not just staying on the hotel and doing that type of stuff. Like you are going out and meeting people and really getting into things and trying local excursions, activities, norms, things like that. Whereas a vacationer, you're going to find more, they only stay with a tour guide or maybe they only stay on their hotel. You know, maybe they go into an all-inclusive resort. There's nothing wrong with that type. It's just a different type of traveling. You know, I define it in two ways. And there's a place for both. There's places I've been that I would only want a vacation there. And then there's places that I've been that I just want to fully travel. Most places I prefer to like just travel and get off the beaten path because I just love doing adventures. But yeah, I'm definitely more of a traveler than a tourist. Aisha Patel, cheese paratha or manusha? <sighs> manusha because I've had more manushas that I've liked. There's a few parathas that I loved. There was just a, the problem with the parathas is there was a couple where I didn't like the cheese type. I don't think that I had all the best recommendations for parathas, so when I come back, I'm gonna have them. But I do love both of them. Muskie Khan, tell us about the most memorable moment of yours, which you will never forget. <laughs> There's so many, but like a couple of the ones that stuck out to me when I randomly met all those guys at the tea shop and they took me to their university and like it was just crazy fast paced going through there and I happened, I just thought it was so crazy that I happened to be there the one week ever that they're celebrating Harry Potter because they just finished a remake film of Harry Potter that they worked on for four years. Like what are the chances that I would be in Lahore at that time, I would randomly meet them at a coffee shop, randomly get invited and somehow make it inside the school when you're not allowed to come in as a visitor like that. So the fact that it all got approved and it worked out like that is just for me mind blowing. And it was such a cool experience. Driving the Tuk Tuk was a lot of fun. I wouldn't say that was necessarily like the highlight, but it was just, it was cool to do. Meeting Abdul Rahim and like really seeing the kindness of some random person walking down the street. They come with us, we became good friends with them. I still talk to Abdul Rahim all the time. So yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty cool, you know? I, I have so many experiences like that though, that in Pakistan, like, oh, there's countless, there's countless, but those are, those are a couple of fun ones. Shukriya Yar from Arain Hassan. Uh, Shukriya Yar. Love to travel. Is it best to book tours in the US or when I get there? I'd say if you're going to do a tour, you might as well book it in advance of coming because then you can get the LOI, which you need to submit with your visa application. XH187, what's the Urdu words you've learned? Abkanam kehe, abkesehe, shukriya, yar, jani, alahafis. Is that it? Shobash in the northern dialect of a different language. It's another word for thank you. That's not Urdu, but I think that's it. Wow, not as many as I thought. Maybe I'm just forgetting them now. Assalamu alaikum. I think that's all of them. Kaugak, getting hassled at the beach by the photographer was hilarious. Any thoughts? <laughs> it was a fun experience, you know, like he made a little extra money on me, but like those are funny adventures for me to experience, <laughs> you know. Hadi169, yeah. why didn't you go Kaghan, Naran, and Kashmir, bro? Because it'll be on my next trip. Kogak, top three foods in Pakistan. Cheese paratha, the one thing I had at the ultimate breakfast that I could literally never remember the name because it's hard for me. And chicken biryani, mmm. Kogak, are you planning on visiting any European countries in the near future? Uh, maybe in 2023. I'm kind of doing the Asia region right now and I probably won't change it too much this year, but you never know, like I don't plan too far in advance, so who knows, maybe later this year I will be in Europe. Sharuk Shid, whom do you enjoy traveling with more, Luke or Harry, and why isn't Luke with you? I like traveling with both of them, they're both my good friends, and yeah, we all have a great time. So there isn't one that I like traveling with more than the other. But Luke was just doing different countries, and Harry and I were doing a boot camp together because Harry was just starting vlogging. But yeah, Luke and I'll definitely meet again multiple times in 2022, so look out on the videos. Kogak, are there any other areas of Pakistan you didn't get a chance to explore? So many. If you made it this far in this video, so, so, so many. Fawad Zahid, come to Saudi Arabia? I'd love to at some point for sure. D. Johnson, when will you visit Latin America? Uh, I did a little bit of Latin America, but not since I was more of a daily vlogger, so probably 
maybe later this year, the next year. I don't know, don't really plan, but I'll for sure be there. So from Zeus Angelo, I want to reverse things and ask you a question. Say you're a Pakistani or a Jordanian travel vlogger and you went to the USA, would you think you would receive the same hospitality and smiles and pure friendliness you saw in the Middle East and Pakistan? Sorry, it is a bit long question. No, it's a really good question. I would say just generally in the Middle East, the hospitality is like its own kind, right? So to answer your question, no, I don't think so because the, that's what's so special about the Middle East is that it's just one of the, and the Middle East and South Asia and Pakistan. I know guys, I learned very early on that Pakistan is not part of the Middle East, I understand. But I'm saying the Middle East and South Asia where the hospitality is really good, it's just the best in the world from my experience. So I don't, I think that's an easy question to answer. I think generally speaking that the cultures in, you know, the Middle East and South Asia, they're just very, very ready to welcome anyone coming into their countries. Whereas not just the USA, there's just a lot of countries that just simply don't have the same level of hospitality. So. That's just kind of the reality, guys. But uh, hopefully, as we continue to travel the world and change perspectives, we can we can try and make people more hospitable. Inshallah. Uh, from Ab Abdul Sabor sixty nine. How much do you like the culture of Pakistan? So much. The people there are awesome. Ramim Bilal. What is the best and worst thing about Pakistan? I think the best thing is for sure the hospitality, as I've mentioned. The worst thing. The worst thing is that they get covered by so much bad press because it's a great country. Yeah, of course there's some bad people in the country, but there's bad people in every country, guys. So let's not define the whole country that it's bad just because there's a couple bad people. By a couple, I mean like a percentage, a small percentage. 99% of the people there are amazing and very hospitable. So let's not do bad media coverage. If you guys put different cultures all in the room together, you'd probably all actually be friends. If you put all the political and religious views aside and just simply got to know each other and said, hey, how are you? What's your name? You're probably gonna be friends. You're probably gonna say, Shukriya Yar, just like that. But that's the reality, guys. We always wanna find differences, but let's find similarities. There's a lot of reasons we can all like each other. Ramin Bilal, which state you're from? I'm from Michigan. So I grew up in Wisconsin, but I was born in Chicago, which is Illinois. So kind of both, I guess you could say. Did you get sick from spicy food? I mean, stomach ache from Ramin Bilal? Nope, never got sick in Pakistan. Fatima Al Zara, where are you? Are you up to next? Hopefully more Arab countries because we miss your funny Arabic. <laughs> Thank you. So I won't be going to Arabic countries next, but I will be um, in a couple months this year. I, I think I'll be back to explore a lot more of the uh, Arabic countries because I love it there too. Dalim 4H1M, how much did it cost to stay in Pakistan for four weeks? Eesh, guys, I didn't really track. I didn't really track it that much. And I gave out a lot of tips because I like to reward people. Maybe $3,000, I don't know. Probably $3,000 for a month there, but I'm not entirely certain. Two to $3,000, something like that. But I didn't track it. I used to track all my expenses pretty closely, but I just don't as much. Eesh. I'm guilty, I know. But you know, I'd say you can easily travel Pakistan for like honestly a thousand bucks for an entire month for sure. I, we just did so much and we stayed at a lot of luxury places too. Like those weren't sponsored videos. We paid for all those luxury hotels. So like what we showed you was literally our experience. So we could have kept our costs much lower. From Johnny Boy 4202 do you get constipated when you eat other foods around the world? That's a very uh, interesting question, but generally no. Not that I've noticed. Generally when I travel though, I probably don't go to the bathroom as much. Mm, that's weird. TMI, next question. TMI means too much information. Hasuni, how did you get the money to travel on a daily basis and is the YouTube revenue sufficient now? Yeah, I worked in the corporate world for five years before, saved up money so I could have money to basically invest in traveling so I could focus on filming and uh, eventually turning my YouTube channel profitable. And yeah, in 2021, generally I turned it completely profitable. Uh, through all. I'm on Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, I'm on all platforms. And so, yeah, it's a very sustainable income. Check out my 100K thank you video that was posted uh, maybe a week ago, roughly. And that'll give you much more of an insight of kind of like my background. Last but not least, Saad AI. Do you know anything about cricket and favorite Pakistan food? I don't know anything about cricket. <laughs> if you saw my videos, I was saying strike like baseball terms. 
don't hate me. I just didn't know. To be honest, guys, I'm not a really a big sports person anyway. It's like even for American sports, uh, back in the U.S., I just I don't follow along too much. Uh, I know that's weird. Most people are always like, that's weird. I'm like, it's, I don't know. I just never really was super interested in sports, but there's nothing wrong with them. I just simply, I don't know, never really pay attention to them that much. So I'm kind of dumb when it comes to sports. So yeah, that was kind of a bad last question for me to answer. But let me just let me finish it off this way, guys. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you for all of you guys that actually stayed till this far into the video. Like I know it was super long. Some of the things were a bit repetitive. I apologize for that. But sometimes like the questions are similar, but different. So the responses can sometimes overlap. But anyways, guys, that was my experience traveling Pakistan. I will be back. I will be exploring more places. I will be trying more Pakistani foods and I will be meeting more of you guys. And so I just want to tell you guys how grateful I am for you to watch all my videos. I, I was shocked by the amount of people that viewed my videos. I never expected videos. Like that bus video that I posted, the luxury bus is like almost a million views. <laughs> Who would have thought? So thank you guys for that. I, I really appreciate your continuous support for all of you guys subscribing, your comments, your liking my videos and your continuous feedback. And so hopefully we can uh, continue this in my next country. I really would appreciate it if you guys continue watching my videos because your support's amazing and I want to just thank you times a million, a million, a million. So that's where I'm going to end this video, guys. This is the end of the Pakistan series. And so as always, if you enjoyed this video, guys, smash that thumbs up and I will see you tomorrow in a new country.